morning, brothers and sisters at uh, GCF Northeast. Thank God for this opportunity to be with you once again. These are anxious times, and it is but right for us to approach God and ask for His guidance and His protection. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of worship. We pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will superintend our meeting, our studying of your word. Guide us, Father, and may you be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. I've entitled this message for today, What to Do When You're Anxious, based on Philippians 4, 6-7. Why don't we uh, read this passage again? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How do we deal with our anxieties or worries? Well, sometimes to our advantage. There's this story about a student who is always late. The student arrived late at school and was worried that he will be detained at the end of the day. The teacher asked, Pedro, you are late again. Why? Mom, my watch is late. The teacher said, is that your problem? Don't worry. Just wind it up to advance. Okay, po, mom. And then... He uh, turned this watch and then he stood up and he was about to leave the room. The teacher asked, where are you going? Pedro said, mom, by my watch, it's dismissal time. <laughs> but, you know, in our times today, our worries are bigger. And for most of us or some of us, it's very real. It's about COVID. A man was so worried about it that he sought advice from his friend. He said, I'm so worried about this COVID that I see on the news. What should I do? His friend said, turn the TV off. <laughs> Isn't that how at times we should uh, deal with this COVID thing? It, just watching the news on TV makes us so worried. Anxiety or worry the excessive kind is not good. We need to deal with it. How? That's our lesson for today. To deal with anxiety, let go and let God. As a background, the epistle of the Philippians or to the Philippians was written by Paul in prison. And it was his thank you letter to the Philippian church for their support. If there's one person who needed to be worried at that time, it was Paul. But he gave us the secret to not being anxious or worried. He shows us two steps on how to handle our worries, whatever it is. Firstly, let go. Release to God your anxieties. You see that in verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to god because the lord is at hand as it says in uh, uh, or the lord is near as it says in verse 5 believers should set their lives and thoughts in certain ways and paul begins with a contrast between anxiety and prayer he notes believers shouldn't be anxious about anything. Why? Because they can pray to God. To help us release our anxieties to God, there are two things to remember. First, don't be overly anxious. Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. The word anxious, merim now in the Greek, is to be Overly anxious, excessive worry. Excessive worry can make you sick. It can cut down your enjoyment of life. 
It can hamper your productivity at work. Excessive worry is bad for our bodily systems. It increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes. It impairs digestion. It causes shortness of breath, asthma, etc., etc. That's why in Matthew 6, uh, this is what the Lord Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 6, 27. Can anyone of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? No. How you react today can predict your chronic health conditions 10 years into the future. And research shows that overreacting, constantly worrying, and living in a perpetual state of anxiety can actually reduce life expectancy. In Matthew 6, 31, again, Jesus said, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? The poet Elizabeth Cheney wrote, uh, this poem said the robin to the sparrow i should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so said the sparrow to the robin friend i think that it must be they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me <laughs> if uh God cares for the sparrows and the robins. We as his children should not be overly anxious. If you are a child of God, God cares for you. Turn your worries over to God. Amen? Secondly, to help us release our anxieties to God, don't be hesitant to tell God, your requests not only should we uh, be uh, not too overly anxious but let us not hesitate to tell god our prayer requests in verse 6 the second part in every situation present your request to god paul was telling the believers that in every situation whatever that may be they can tell god in prayer what they need. Can you think of that pressing need that you have right now? Present this to God. We present our request to God by faith. So how do we show our faith when it comes to presenting our request to Him? Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. So, how do we uh, present our request to God? Showing our faith in Him? By praying in a group. By prayer, present your request to God. It says in verse 6. The word prayer here, prosyuke, in the context, is like prayers offered in a house of prayer. A house of prayer like a synagogue. So when believers gathered there, it was a group. So we, they, they were praying in a group. And today this means you can share your prayer requests in a prayer meeting church, a midweek prayer meeting or prayer gathering, or your small group meeting for prayer. Now, if you can meet face-to-face -face today, you can do so via Zoom or whatever social media platform you're using. Secondly, we show our faith in God by praying directly to God. And petition, present your request to God by petition. The word petition is deasis. It means personal prayers. This means that if we cannot attend a group prayer meeting, God understands. We can go directly to Him. God hears our prayers in a group or even our individual prayers. So let's do that when we have the opportunity.
prayer in a group or individual prayer. And there's a third thing that shows that we have faith. It is by including thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Verse 6 says, The Greek word for thanksgiving is eucharistia or thankfulness. When we pray, we can thank God in advance for His answer. Just this uh, last month, I started having a cold. My family took immediate precautions. I went in isolation and we informed our small groups and the church about my condition. We prayed that I'd be negative for COVID. And I had my swab test and it came out positive. But instead of worrying, I spent the time praying. The Lord in a, you know, He answered in a different way. My COVID was mild. And so I thank the Lord for this. And my family, church, and small groups continued praying for my healing and recovery. And even as I prepared for this message, I was on the way to recovery. My isolation ended on September 30, the day I recorded this message. Praise be to God, our healer. I learned how to let go instead of worrying too much. So to deal with anxiety, the first step is to, to let go. Release to God your anxieties. And this means don't be overly anxious and don't be hesitant to tell God your prayer requests. Let's go to step two. First is let go. The second step is let God. Rest assured of God's peace as he does his part. Verse 7. And the peace of God, after we present to him our request, no? and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul was telling the believers then that if they release the Father their anxieties, God will give them his peace. After releasing to God our worries, he, give us, he gives us his peace. And how is this peace described? First, this peace comes from God himself. And the peace of God, it says in the first part of verse 7. Paul was telling the believers about this peace, that this is not from the world, but this is from God. It is the peace of God. And this peace is available to all believers every time in every every way that god can give it let's look at second thessalonians 3 and verse 16. now may the lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the lord be with you all the lord gives us peace and when he's and he is present in all our circumstances God's word says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Let's look at another verse in John 14, verse 1. And this is Jesus speaking. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus said. This is the peace of God that comes when we have that saving faith or that Trusting faith in God, the Father, and God the Son. This peace comes from God. And this is the first description of this peace that God gives us. It comes from Him. The second description is that this peace cannot be explained by human understanding. And the peace of God, it says in verse 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Many times it cannot be comprehended by knowledge or wisdom of this world. Not even our best educated guess. And that is why in John 14, 27, this is what Jesus said about this peace. John 14, 27. Peace, I live with you. Jesus told his disciples, my peace I give you. 
I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. When we have the peace of God, when we have the peace of Christ, we will not be afraid. We will not be afraid to die. Because if we get struck with COVID and the Lord uh, says it's time for you to go home, then who are we to stop God? The important thing is that we have Christ in our lives because if we have Christ in our lives, we may die, but yet we will live. And that's the promise of God. Amen? We're not going to be afraid to die. And we will not be afraid to face our trials and tests and temptations. Why? Well, because of the presence of God. Now, the question is, after releasing our requests to God, how do we appropriate God's peace? The key is in Christ Jesus, as we see in verse 7. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So how do we appropriate God's peace in Christ Jesus? First, let Christ dwell in your heart by faith. Paul said in verse 7, And the peace of God will guard your hearts. When we have Christ in our lives, He will guard our hearts. The word guard here is like a sentry posted at the gate of a camp to keep out the enemy. When we receive Christ, the idea is that He has taken residence in our lives, in every room, corner, nook, and cranny, of our lives jesus should be the lord even at the gates of our lives the eyes the ears that lead to the heart and he will ensure that the enemy will not take away what is already ours eternal life and the peace of god amen let's look at ephesians 3 and verse 17 so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, Jesus told the Ephesian believers. It doesn't mean that we have to receive Christ again. We only receive him once. Paul was already talking to believers at that time when he meant having received Christ in all his fullness and allowing him to have control. Believers should rest and live in him. Believing his promises. And this gives peace in our hearts. When we let Christ dwell in our hearts, we have peace. The second way to appropriate God's peace is to let Christ renew our mind. And the peace of God will guard your minds. Paul said that the peace of God will guard our minds as well. Again, we have the idea of a sentinel or guard to keep away negative thoughts. Let's look at Romans 12, 1-2. Romans 12, 1-2, again, this is Paul writing, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true pattern or proper worship. And do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we have Christ in our lives and allow Him to transform our minds, we begin to know God's will. And God's will for us is not to worry, not to be anxious. And as we allow uh, the Spirit to renew us, you know, uh, we will seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things that we worry about will be taken care of by God Himself. And if it's a need, it will be given to us. When we allow Christ to renew our minds, we have this peace. 
And so, we appropriate God's peace by letting Christ dwell in uh, our hearts and letting Christ renew our minds. Thirdly, to appropriate God's peace, let Christ be your Lord. Huh? In Christ, the word in Christ means Christ living in you and you living out your life in Christ. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Now here's the question. You have Christ in you. Are you in Christ? If you've not received him, that may be the reason why you worry too much. If you haven't received Christ in your life, please make that decision today. Message Pastor Boyd Gonzalez or any of the church leaders here at GCF Northeast after the service and ask them, how do I receive Jesus as Savior and Lord? And they will be glad to share with you the good news of salvation in Christ. So there you have it to deal with anxiety. Step one, let go. Release to God your anxieties. And then step two, let God. Rest assured of God's peace as he does his part. What are you anxious about right now? Is it your health? Finances? You need money for something? Are you anxious or worried about relationships in the family or at school, at work? Is there a project or assignment that you need to be you need to finish and uh, many people are counting on you? We worry about these things. An average person's anxiety is focused on 40% on things that will never happen. 30% on things about the past that cannot be changed. 12% on things about criticism by others, mostly untrue. 10% about health, which gets worse with stress. And only 8% about real problems that will be faced. Instead of dealing with anxiety or worry on our own, let's hand these over to God. Our worries, our anxieties, our cares, our problems. Now, here's a nice quote from Hudson Taylor, a British missionary. He said, let us give up our work, our plans, ourselves, our lives, our loved ones, our influence, our all, right into God's hand. And then when we have given all over to Him, there will be nothing left for us to be troubled about. So, that's it. To handle or to deal with anxiety, let go and let go. Amen? Now, for your reflection or your discussion in your small group. Answer these two questions. What is your greatest worry today? Then second, knowing that we can let go of our worries and let God handle things. What is one thing that you learn from this message that you will apply in your situation? Have a great day, have a great week ahead, and let us uh, pray. Dear Lord, we thank you, we praise you for this message of assurance. Thank you that we can let go of our worries and cares. We release them to you, Father, whatever it is that we are experiencing right now, that we are worried about. We thank you, dear God, because you will take care of all these things. Thank you for the peace that you will give us because we know you care for us and you will handle 
everything, Father, for us. Now, Lord, we commit to you even Pastor Boyd Gonzalez. With this uh, health situation, we also pray for your healing grace upon him. Your provisions be upon his family as well. And for all of us, oh God, as we face this COVID menace, we continue to pray for your protection for all families here at GCF Northeast and even our brethren from other churches, oh Lord. We ask, dear Father, that you will continue to assure us of your presence and power. And so, as we trust in you, Lord, you will give us your peace. We thank you. We praise you. May you be glorified and honored in our lives, in our families, in this church. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters in Christ.